There's a certain charm to solving a big problem with a straightforward fix. Think about the AS6 engine as kind of a cut through the complexity moment, kind of like Alexander the Great not bothering with untying the Gordian knot and just slicing right through it. The folks at Fiat, in their quest for more power for their Schneider racing engines, hit upon a brilliantly simple idea. Instead of getting bogged down in the nitty gritty of squeezing out a bit more combustion efficiency, which might have been a dead end, they went for a gutsier move. Why not just double the engine's size? So from their standard V12 design, they jumped to this V24 beast that cranks out 3,100 horsepower with 50.2 liters of displacement. In the 1929 Schneider Trophy Contest, Italy entered with several aircraft and engine combinations but didn't manage to secure a win, leaving Britain to take home the trophy for the second consecutive time. This victory brought Britain one step closer to keeping the Schneider Trophy permanently, which was a scenario Italy was obviously keen to avoid. In response, Italy decided to concentrate its efforts on developing a single aircraft and engine combination for the next contest. Machi Aeronautica was chosen to design the airframe, leading to the development of the Machi Castoldi 72, MC-72 for short. Fiat was tasked with creating a powerful engine to outperform the British with the design of the MC-72 built around this new engine. Under the leadership of Tranquillo Zerbi, Fiat chose to adapt and improve the existing AS5 V12 engine used in the 29 race rather than starting from scratch. The goal was to increase its power output from 1,000 horsepower to at least 2,300 horsepower through enhancements such as adding a supercharger and increasing compression. Despite initial doubts about the AS5's capabilities, Fiat decided to combine two AS5 engines to create the V24 AS6 engine. This complex engineering feat involved a shared magnesium crankcase and induction manifold with separate systems for ignition, coolant, and oil, all controlled by a single throttle linkage. Each AS5 engine section forming half of the V24 engine utilized a 0.60 gear reduction tailored for the propellers at the engine's rear. The drive shafts, one from each engine, passed through the V of the front engine extending to the aircraft's nose. A particularly ingenious design was the coaxial arrangement of the drive shafts, with the rear engine's longer shaft enclosing the shorter one from the front engine. This configuration allowed each engine to independently drive a pair of coaxial contra-rotating propellers. The front engine powered the rear propeller while the rear engine drove the front propeller, effectively canceling out engine torque and ensuring the propeller blades remained short enough to avoid sea spray, which was a crucial consideration for sea-based operations. The rear engine section housed a supercharger that delivered 6.5 psi of boost to both engine sections through an extensive manifold. Operating the supercharger required about 250 horsepower and needed to rotate at 17,000 RPM to function correctly. So to counterbalance the power consumption and efficiency discrepancies, the propeller pitches were adjusted on the ground with differing settings for the front and rear propellers. The AS6's engine development, despite being a marvel of its time, wasn't without its challenges. It ran into a host of technical issues right from the start. Think trouble with the spark plugs, the ignition system acting up, coolant flow not quite right, fuel metering being off, issues with induction and exhaust valves, connecting rods giving grief, and the supercharger drive causing headaches. It took a significant amount of time and effort to iron out these problems, but by April 1931, they managed to get the engine running smoothly for an hour, hitting the 2300 horsepower mark. When it came to the flight trials that kicked off in the summer of 1931, things got a bit more complicated. They installed the AS6 engine in the first of five MC-72 aircraft and took to the skies. However, a serious issue soon popped up. The engine began to backfire at high power and speeds during flight, which was something they hadn't really seen in ground tests. Even with these engine troubles, though, the aircraft managed to hit speeds of 375 miles per hour. Unfortunately, demonstrating this backfire issue led to a tragic event. On August 2nd, 1931, Captain Giovanni Monti was piloting the MC-72 in front of Fiat and Machi engineers to show them exactly what was happening. A backfire during flight caused an explosion in the induction manifold, and the aircraft crashed into Lake Garda, resulting in the loss of Captain Monti. With the clock ticking down to the Schneider contest and the backfiring issue still unsolved, Italy had to make a tough call. They decided to withdraw the AS6-powered MC-72 from the competition. 
This left the field wide open for the British, who went on to fly uncontested for the Schneider Trophy and ultimately secured it permanently. A setback for Italy, no doubt, but not the end of their ambitions. Even with the race out of reach, Italy wasn't ready to give up on making a mark. They set their sights on the absolute world speed record, aiming to make a statement on the very same day as the Schneider race, September 13th, 1931. Lieutenant Stanislaw Bellini took to the skies for a practice run on September 10th, hoping to breach 394 miles per hour. Unfortunately, tragedy struck again. The MC-72 crashed, suspected to be caused by an in-flight fire or explosion, which sidelined the aircraft from any further flights. But the story didn't end there. Italy remained committed to the dream of shattering speed records. Pinpointing the backfire issue as fuel-related, they reached out for help, and the person who answered the call was none other than Rod Banks from Britain. Despite his connections with the British Schneider team, Banks wasn't tied down by his nationality. In 1932, he came over to lend his expertise, drawn by the challenge of refining the AS-6 engine. Rod Banks dove right into the heart of the AS-6's troubles and found that yes, it could hit 2,400 horsepower, even pushing a sprint version to 2,850 horsepower, but it was a fleeting victory, lasting only a minute before reliability issues kicked in, which is something I think we can all relate to. He pinpointed a key oversight, which was the ram effect. Essentially, the faster the aircraft flew, the more air got shoved into the engine, throwing the fuel mixture off and causing those pesky backfires. Borrowing a page from Rolls-Royce's playbook, Banks used a blower to mimic the effect of speeding through the air at 435 miles an hour, which helped fine-tune the engine to resist backfiring under those intense conditions. This tweak meant that Sprint engine could now sustain its peak performance for longer, marking a leap in both power and reliability. With the AS-6's engine's quirks ironed out, the MC-72 was back in the sky by late 1932, reliable and more powerful, cranking out a solid 2400 horsepower. And so the stage was set for a string of record-breaking flights. On April 10, 1933, Warrant Officer Francisco Ajeo blazed through the sky in MM-177, setting a new 3-kilometer absolute world speed record at 423 miles per hour. Not far behind, Lieutenant Colonel Casanelli snagged the 100km speed record at 391 miles an hour in October, and Captain Scapanelli clinched the Blario Cup with a speed of over 600km an hour for more than 30 minutes later the same month. 1934 was no less remarkable. An even more powerful AS-6 Sprint engine was fitted into the MC-72, now boasting 3,100 horsepower. Ajeo, taking the helm again, shattered his previous record, hitting 440 miles an hour, a feat only matched now by the fastest contemporary race planes of today. For example, aircraft such as Dreadnought and Precious Metal top out at about 440 to 450 miles an hour, and that's 80 to 90 years later. So, like all of these mini-engine documentaries, how does the AS-6 engine fit into our historical context of engine performance? Well, in the early 30s, not many engines were generating this amount of power. That much is obvious. That said, I think one of the most ingenious aspects of the AS-6 engine was its method of increasing displacement, that is, to increase the length of the engine rather than increase the overall size of the engine. What that does is it reduces the overall cross-sectional area, which gives a huge aerodynamic advantage. That said, the reliability issues that plagued all of these hyper-racing engines were exactly why we didn't see this level of performance out of production fighter aircraft at the beginning of World War II. Because these engines were often bespoke, babied, and incredibly expensive to develop and maintain, they were not good candidates for aircraft intended for mass production. However, it is fun to imagine how the skies over Europe might have changed if someone had been willing to make that sort of investment early on. 